Hi guys, my name is Alut Jindal. Welcome to the channel. Today I am going to take our discussion forward for NABARD and RBI Phase 2 English papers which has been very aptly and uh, very uh, covered in in-depth by me till now as well. So I am going to take the discussion forward and today we will be talking about one more essay topic which is WTO rules and Indian agricultural subsidies. I'm going to uh, tell you the topic once and then we'll try and understand how to write in this essay. So in the past, I have discussed uh, more than six essay topics with you guys already, which are all available on YouTube. If you have not watched those videos, do go now and watch them because there are high chances that one of those essays is going to strike in the examination. I have also shared a total of 22 topics for the upcoming NAWAD examination. Those are very, very important. Do not miss out on them. Cover at least 20 out of those 22 topics and you will be ensured or assured that you will have 70 on 100 very easily if uh, an essay comes which you have already prepared before the examination. Okay. So make sure that you watch all those things and prepare those things at home before going to the examination hall. Today we are going to take an international topic which although chances of being asked are lesser but at the same time it's an important topic and if it is asked very less number of students are going to write on it and therefore if you write on it you're going to get very good marks. Let's identify the keywords here first. The question says or the topic says how can India balance between WTO rules, rules on subsidies which is the first keyword here and the need to support Indian farmers through direct and indirect monetary support, which is the second keyword here. So what the question or the topic is asking from us or demanding from us. First of all, you tell us what are the WTO rules on subsidies. Secondly, you tell us how these rules on subsidies harm Indian, Indian farming or Indian agriculture subsidy system. How is it against that system? And how can India make changes in the rules which we have as well as how can we demand changes from WTO in the rules that they have so that direct and indirect monetary support to farmers is not hindered or subsidy to farmers is provided as it is. Okay, So how can India balance between WTO rules on subsidies number one and the need to support Indian farmers through various kinds of subsidies? That's what the question is asking. How does India create the right balance between these two things? So first of all, as we have already discussed in the past as well, in the introduction we talk about what are WTO rules on subsidies and the importance or the primary purpose of these subsidies. Importance or primary purpose of these subsidies in the international arena. So that is going to be your, uh, you know, very brief yet very effective introduction that, that you're going to give. So in the introduction, we tell them what is WTO, what are the WTO rules on subsidies. It says WTO aims to promote free and fair trade among all member nations to ensure equality in trade, it discourages many kinds of subsidies which modify the pricing structure. So you don't have to tell them what are the rules, different rules on subsidies. You have to tell them why these rules exist. What is the purpose of these rules? And then you talk about agreement on agriculture. That is the primary purpose of these rules. Agreement on ag agriculture is one such agreement which aims to prevent trade distorting subsidies around the world. So remember this, what am I doing here? I'm using a lot of keywords here. Free and fair trade, modify the pricing structure, agreement on agriculture, trade distorting subsidies around the world. All these are keywords. If you write these keywords, the examiner will be forced to give you good marks. Now, what I have mentioned here, agreement on agriculture in WTO contains three aspects. All these three things are for your knowledge, for your understanding and even if you miss them in the examination, it's not going to matter for the simple reason that this is not what has been asked in the examination. This has not, this is not being asked in the, in the topic. The topic is something else and therefore uh, these three aspects which are available in agreement on agriculture, which are market access, domestic support and export subsidies now, not to be mentioned in the examination because you don't have enough space. You have to write the essay in only three to four hundred words. So there's not enough space. 
let me explain to you very briefly what these three are and then we'll move forward market access says to enable better market access for all through tarification tarification here means that you convert all kinds of subsidies all kind of non tariff barriers for example quotas variable levies minimum import prices licensing straight trading measures there are a lot of non tariff barriers which any country can put on its imports in order to safeguard its domestic industries so the market access says that you open the markets open the markets domestic markets to international trade how do you do that you convert first of all you convert all these non tariff barriers to tariff barriers so the first tariff is uh, first step is not to uh, you know in one go let go of all the barriers but to convert them to tariff barriers which are easier to measure easier to control or easier to regulate and the second step would be to let go of these tariff barriers or to rationalize them that would be the right word to rationalize them so that they don't support the domestic industry they don't give them an undue advantage okay so these are the two major steps and market access talks about first major step out of these domestic support is items out of green box subsidies can be provided domestic support up to 10% of value of production from 1986 to 88 levels so out of green box there are total of three boxes which we'll be talking about them first is green then you have amber then you have blue amber and blue we'll be talking about them as well so whatever item is not in green which means it is in amber or blue the maximum subsidy that can be provided from these items in these boxes is 10% of value of production from 1986 to 88 levels okay very factual thing and this is the area where india had opposed wto rules and the third is export subsidies members commit to reduce subsidies given on exports of agricultural products so at, on one instance you are trying to reduce reduce tariffs or change the structure of barriers on imports and on the other hand you are working in the field of exports by ensuring that they don't uh, you know members reduce subsidies given on exports so that they don't have an undue advantage in the international arena when they try and export their goods to other markets okay so these are the three major aspects under wto rules on agreement on agriculture and this is where india had opposed saying that it is giving an undue advantage or a not fair to the developing world nations i hope you have understood it not required to mention it in the question because the topic is not talking about it wto classifies subsidies as i said into three boxes green amber and blue green is uh, for example pm kisan is green that is why this particular question again becomes important pm kisan which has recently been launched which provides a direct income support of rupees 6000 per year to farmers is a green subsidy because it does not distort trade or cause any distortion in trade or production it just incentivizes farmers and provides them enough money so that they can produce whatever they want to produce because they have direct price support okay amber box subsidies which are permitted subsidies but there are limits and uh, blue are um, uh, under amber which have Uh, more conditions you don't need to know about them problems with india subsidies so in the question uh, the introduction has been done now we talk about the body what are you going to talk about in the body in the body you will first of all tell what are the problems with india subsidies what are the problems with india subsidies because there are certainly some problems with india subsidies then you tell what are the problems with problems with wto rules which india has a post and thirdly you will tell them how to create the right balance between wto and india okay so problems with india subsidies are that uh, these subsidies violate multilateral trading rules specifically number 2 that i discussed above second is there is a 10% limit on farm subsidies maximum amount subsidy which can be given is 10% under agreement uh, aggregate measurement measure of uh, support uh, it is based on 1986 88 prices that is external reference point is 1986 to 88 so what it is trying to say is is it's a continuation of the first point so the major problem with india subsidies is that it violates this 10% norm 
and secondly that we provide subsidies subsidies which distort the market structure distort the market structure according to wto let me give you an example you can even mention this example very briefly in the exam also for example all the msp which is being provided minimum support price which is being provided now let's say the market price is rupees 100 per kilo on rice but you're providing msp of rupees 150 per kg so although the market structure says or the market mechanism says that uh, the farmer should be getting 100 rupees per kg based on market demand and supply but the government has interfered or intervened in between and is saying that let us keep the price at 150 so the farmer sells it at rupees 150 this goes to the black market or goes elsewhere goes uh, uh, you know to the market uh, to some extent or the other and then it distorts this entire market price mechanism of rupees 100 per kg the market rises to rupees 150 per kg or something or the other happens but the final result is that market mechanism of determining price demand and supply is distorted completely okay this is what wto says that the subsidies the kind of subsidies that you provide change the market structure and therefore distorts the market mechanism therefore it's not suitable for uh, a sustainable growth of trade in the future this is the major problem with india subsidies then what are the problems with WTO's subsidies? WTO's uh, mechanism, what is the problem with that? The One of the major problems which I have mentioned above is 1986-88 as external reference point, which is too old, too old to be called a reference point also. Secondly, whatever they have put in green, green box, amber box and blue box, it is uh, mostly determined by the developed countries in the past and it suits the needs of developed countries the kind of subsidies that they provide but it does not suit the need of developing nations at a lot of points for example pds public distribution system now pds ensures that every family has food on the table every poor family has food on the table in fact if you replace pdf with direct benefit transfer of let's say rupees 12000 per annum then what it might do is in, uh, in the poor families you have a lot of alcoholics especially men they might spend all this money on alcohol and there would be no food on the table which is very important for poor families that's what they're surviving on so PDS ensures that nothing can happen to this uh, misuse of direct money transfer and therefore there is always food on the table of a poor family so these are the kinds of complications that developed countries say that the WTO does not understand because uh, developed countries have not faced those problems till now and therefore they don't understand the complexities that developing countries like India with a huge population are facing okay so these are the two problems that you that you can mention and then you talk about balance how to strike the right balance between these two in fact we've already started it through as i said pm kisan by giving out direct benefit transfer but not for everything but specifically for areas where you think that the exploitation or misuse of this money can be minimum okay so direct benefit transfer is a major uh, move wherein striking a balance has been done secondly uh, we have also achieved a temporary a temporary relief from WTO uh, based on our demand that we cannot let go of these subsidies in one go because of the kind of support that they're providing so this shows that uh, a balance can be created if WTO understands the needs of developing countries like India understands needs of developing nations like India okay so that is very important that is how a balance can be created so these are the two major steps through which balance can be created on one point you have India following what WTO needs on the second point uh, uh, you know at the other end you have WTO considering the demands of India and why exactly are we providing the kind of subsidies that we are providing okay so that was all about uh, the body part now how to conclude this uh, particular question the question says 
how to strike a balance between WTO's demands and India's direct and indirect monetary support. You conclude by saying that continuous efforts need to be made so that WTO understands the needs of developing nations, needs of developing nations like India and change the rules which presently favor developed countries. Okay, because uh, they also give huge subsidies to farmers, but their subsidies, uh, all their subsidies lie in green box and therefore they are not questioned. On the other hand, we and our farmers are questioned and our government is questioned just because our subsidies are considered by WTO as trade distorting without understanding the complexities of Indian uh, agriculture or Indian market. Okay. So this was all about this particular lesson wherein I provided detailed analysis of how to write a complicated essay like this one wherein you want to write a lot, you have a lot of information but all that information becomes useless because it is not directly asked in the examination. Uh, the examination, the question is asking something else out of all that information that you've read. I hope uh, this was a useful lesson. I shall be coming out with more such useful lessons in the future and I'll try and cover as many topics out of those 22 topics as possible so that if one of them strikes in the examination, you will uh, have a nice time. You will enjoy writing that kind of answer or that kind of essay in the examination. Till then, all the very best. Take care and do subscribe to the channel if you like this lesson so that you don't miss out on these important things that I'm coming out at towards the end of the examination. Okay, take care. Have a nice day.